Good afternoon, everybody. I mean, an it's impromptu like evening, isn't it? I th I feel six. Six is when you hit evening. This is the official cutoff. This is, very, this is very late afternoon, but an impromptu Thursday mm. night show. Chris, are you? Uh, I mean, you know, we we uh, we didn't know we were going to do this. Um, obviously, some news broke a little bit ago, and um, I just kind of felt compelled to get on here and talk about it a little bit. It's obviously all over social media. Um, we put an article up on it on the website. Chris put a post on the Facebook page. The comments are like blowing up on that thing. So it just felt like let's get on and talk about it a little bit. We can involve the people. We'll involve ourselves and we'll we'll get right into it. So obviously the point of uh, of this and the uh, the focal point is not awesome. Um, I don't think there's any way to slice it that this isn't a good thing, a good look. But this was the. This was the the I think the first bomb to drop. It might have been the big. I know it wasn't the Big Ten. I think it first hit Yahoo Sports, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, a few hours ago, late Wednesday afternoon, the Big Ten Conference and University of Michigan were notified by the NCAA that they are doing an investigation on allegations of sign stealing by the University of Michigan football program. The Big Ten Conference notified Michigan State University and other future opponents. The Big Ten Conference considers the integrity of competition to be of utmost importance and will continue to monitor the investigation. The conference will have no further comment at this time. In other words, it sounds like Greg Schiano for sure is one of the one of the people or one of the programs accusing Michigan of stealing signs, but not only stealing signs, but doing so in a way that's completely against the rules. Because you in game, like if you pick up on signs and you see some trends, that that's fair game. But what Michigan is being accused of is potentially sending out people to go scout games in person all over the country, one would assume, and then take notes on it, maybe even record it. I think there's one person who has said that they thought someone was video record, which that's just one person's word. But I mean, at the end of the day, Michigan is being accused by at least three or four different people from different programs for cheating, essentially for stealing signs and using it to gain a competitive advantage. And th that's pretty much where we're at. Michigan state apparently may have even had the chance to not play the game this weekend, which seems crazy to me. I can't believe that would be an option. Um, but yeah, that's about what we know at this point. So I don't know. I mean, Chris, I think you, you, you laid it out on the Facebook page and just simply said, not ideal. Cause it's not, yeah. this is not a good deal. Any way you slice it. I don't know what will come of this. I don't know if it's, if you're able to prove it, but now it's out there and that sucks. Yeah. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, the news broke a, a handful of hours ago, so we've had a chance to sort of, you know, sit back and digest and, and see what everybody's saying about it. Read, you know, what was in the Yahoo sports report and then read, you know, subsequently what, what the athletic put out. Um, and I think there's just a, there's a couple things that I think everybody needs to understand. And, and number one, sign stealing is not new. It's been around forever. Everybody acknowledges it. I mean, you've seen, you know, RG3 come out this afternoon and say, well, then every every team should be investigated. You saw JJ Watt come out and say the same thing. Players, coaches, people that are saying this is this is common practice. And I think that was even noted in the in the Yahoo Sports article. The distinction here, and I think you you said it uh, in the lead up, is that. Michigan is being accused of sending individuals to, to games to scout opponents in particular, scout whatever the hand signals are coming from uh, coming from the sideline, from the coordinators. And then in the, the article from The Athletic, it kind of took it a bit of a step further. Further, It says the Big Ten claims that Michigan, you know, according to one source, is using a vast network to steal opposing team signs um, and then also had shared that uh, the Big Ten had shared it with Michigan State, said that it had reviewed film that indicates Michigan has or had knowledge of what an opposing team was going to run before the play actually occurred. So I guess that's where I start is, you know, let's all accept and acknowledge that all steam, all teams steal hand signals. And, and, and that's been going on for a while. But the difference and the distinction here is whether or not Michigan has been using individuals apparently you know when you use the term vast network it sounds pretty you know it sounds like yeah. deep conspiracy type stuff what real quick on on, on that point 
to, real to, quick on that point, just just to finish the thought, to go in, you know, to different venues to watch different teams and to steal the signals from the sidelines and then use that that footage to be able to know what a team is going to run ahead of time. So on your point about all teams stealing signs, because there's already a faction out there that's like, no, they don't. Yeah, not everybody steals signs. Well, yeah, they do because for the last 15 years in college football, you have four to six to eight guys on the sidelines doing this. And only right. one of them is the real play caller. You also have certain teams who use giant picture boards to call the plays. Some of them are dummy calls. Some of them are real. Some of them are not even involved in the game. So to say that no one else is doing that, that's everybody does this because that's where those systems came from. That's where the different every game you can look over on the sidelines. You can see backup quarterbacks, staffers and assistant coaches in different colored hats, different colored wristbands, different color vests so that when they can do a check over to the sideline, they know exactly who to look for, where to look and what play to, to, to call. So this has been going on forever. So that argument about like, well, Michigan's got caught. How come everybody else? It doesn't really matter because it has been going on. There's no doubt about it that teams have been stealing signs for as long as sports have been around, frankly, and it's right. not just football and the other teams have come up with systems to try to prevent this. So I just sure. think that's an important point to make among the first argument there. It is. And, and, and James um, in the comments, the question, is there a rule against scouting in person? Yes. That's, yes. that's where the issue comes into play. And that's what the, the basis of the accusation is, is that Michigan has sent people in. And I think that is, if I'm correct here, this dates dates back to last season. We've had you know uh, teams that have accused Michigan of doing this last year, um, and I know we had a conversation about this earlier, whether or not it was just limited to the 2023 season. It's it's not. It sounds like it goes back to last year as well. And if you look at Michigan, see this is this is the shitty part about the whole thing is that. If you're Michigan and you're under investigation, same as you know the the investigation with Harbaugh earlier and whether or not he told the truth and you know what what was going on with you know the recruiting violations and that you know buying a meal for recruits yada 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 he was not allowed to speak on the investigation because it was ongoing. Michigan is in a similar spot here; they're not allowed to speak on it, but it's now known throughout the, the sporting world that Michigan is under investigation and they can't talk about it. And I think that puts Michigan in a really difficult spot. So what you're seeing in the meantime is folks are now going back, watching the tape of Michigan dominate last year in the second half of games and blowing out Ohio state and saying, you know, trying to cling to anything they can cling to, to say, eh, see, that wasn't legitimate. There had to have been a reason why Michigan looked as good as they did. I think here's, here's where I fall on this you know, just after listening to some of the different uh, perspectives throughout the day, I come away with it thinking right now there, there has been an accusation made, but there there's no evidence, at least that anybody I know of has seen specifically that would indicate mission Michigan is doing this. There's, there's an accusation that this is happening. What gives me concern is that the Big Ten has gone ahead and notified future opponents. And I think if if you're the league and you're going to do that, you can't be doing that based on a hunch or based on you know hearsay or something you think might be happening. I think in order for the Big Ten to take the step to go ahead and say, okay, we're going to notify Penn State. We're going to notify future opponents on Michigan's schedule, let them know this is happening. They, they have to have something of substance. What that is, I don't know. What type of penalty that leads to, I'm not sure, but it's clear that a couple things are happening. One, there's something to this. I think it's just a matter of to what extent. And two, the NCAA is hell-bent on getting Michigan, and in particular Jim Harbaugh, for something. Because we know that college football isn't clean. We know that college athletics isn't clean. But the NCAA seems to have a hard-on for Jim Harbaugh and making sure that he pays some sort of price. And so I do think that this is going to lead to some sort of penalty what it looks like in the end, I don't know. But for anybody out there that's a Michigan fan, my initial thoughts were probably the same as yours. I wanted to dismiss it. Ah, it's bullshit. Michigan's good. They're just trying to do whatever they can do to bring down the program. But I think when the conference gets involved, and start, it sounds to me like Michigan State actually had an option to not even play that's on Saturday say, yeah. and, and opted to do that. When you start to get to that level, uh, it makes me a little bit concerned as a Michigan fan that there has to be something to what's being reported and what's being um, accused. 
Yeah, I think if if you're literally going to give Michigan State the option to not play on Saturday, that's that's pretty serious. That's not that goes beyond just word of mouth. Like we think Michigan's doing this. It's pretty clear that they did that. It, it's it's above and beyond that. And uh, apparently, Michigan is going to get their hands on the evidence at some point. I mean, today's already Thursday. I don't know if it'll happen tomorrow or before the Michigan State game on Saturday. But at some point, Michigan is going to get their hands on the evidence that's been that's been delivered to the NCAA or delivered to the Big Ten Conference. I'm not sure exactly what the order of operations is. They're like, who gets it first and then what and then what and then what? But apparently, Michigan is going to get their hands on this evidence at some point. Now, whether or not that evidence is legitimate, whether or not it proves anything, I don't know. I don't know how they could possibly do that. But again, to Chris's point and to the investigations point, if the if the Big Ten Conference is going to get involved and notify the last five teams on Michigan's schedule, just so you know, this is going on. That's a pretty big deal. That is a pretty big deal. And it does make me think that there's something to this. I, I, I'm not going to sit there and say like, well, they'll never prove it. So who cares? I can't. I just can't feel that way about it personally i don't know if they'll be able to prove it but this does this does make you wonder a little bit like what exactly happened who noticed what how did it happen what kind of proof are they talking about um and oh and to another point of yours chris jim harbaugh can't talk about any of this stuff because there is an ongoing investigation but apparently his lawyer released a statement that said Jim can't talk about this because it's investigation, but if he could, he would vehemently deny everything that's being reported. So, I mean, like that's essentially Jim, that's, that's lawyer talk for Jim saying this is bullshit. None of this happened. I, I you know, that, what else is he going to say? Of course, that's what he's got to say at this point. But a, again, it really makes you wonder when the conference is going to take, take it to heart that much and actually almost proactively make sure it can't happen by giving teams the giving teams the option to not play. I've never heard of that. I've yeah. never heard of a team except for COVID stuff. I've never heard of a team getting the option to not play a game. It okay. But see, this, this is, this is what we can't do. Uh, Ralph from the Facebook page, you know, basically you know, telling us to stop fanning the fake flames. Like we're, we're not, listen, we're not fanning any sort of flames. This is this is just a conversation about what's happening, what's being reported, and what it could possibly mean. And I think again, if you're a Michigan fan, the instinctual response is to call bullshit on it and to just, you know, it's Michigan against the world. Michigan's, you know, one of the favorites to win a national championship and and folks in in positions of power don't want to see that happen for a number of reasons. I do think uh, you know, Jim Harbaugh has been very outspoken about, you know, revenue sharing and, and TV deals when it comes to players. And I think that that's something that the NCAA is probably not a big fan of. And obviously you have the ongoing investigation with the previous things. So there's there's some beef there between, you know, Jim Harbaugh and Michigan and the NCAA. But what what I would just ask is if you're a Michigan fan, don't just dismiss it as nothing. Right. I don't, I don't think. If it was just the NCAA, it might be easy to do that. But when the conference is notifying future opponents, giving Michigan State the opportunity to not play in the game, there has to be something of substance to this. Now, sure, no evidence that we've seen, but that doesn't mean the NCAA doesn't have evidence. That doesn't mean the Big Ten doesn't have evidence. And it sure as hell sounds like they they have something. They've got their hands on something, and they're going to give it to Michigan. I don't know. Within the coming days, they should have it in their hands. Uh, and I'm just curious what this means for, you know, not just the game this weekend, but what does the rest of the season look like? Because if if you're you know if you're Michigan, you're number two in the country. It's looking like you're headed toward the playoff. You're going to compete in a Big Ten championship. What evidence do they have if this has been occurring? And then how do you penalize a team that's a front runner in the Big Ten Conference and presumably, you know, one of the favorites to win uh, the national championship? I think that's what's going to be really interesting is I don't think nothing is going to happen. I think something is going to happen. It's just to what extent. But if you're a Michigan fan, don't just dismiss it as bullshit because the, things like this don't happen if it's just bullshit. The, the Big Ten is taking actual steps to notify future opponents that, Hey, this is going on. And the big, you know, forget about what you think about the NCAA, the big 10 wouldn't do that if they didn't think that there was something there. Yeah. I just think if you're, 
if your immediate response is, ah, oh, it's horseshit, it's a witch hunt, I just don't think you're yeah. really paying attention. I, 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 I would love for nothing more than this to just be like, yeah, the, the NCAA is like, we took a huge deep dive into everything we, and, and we found nothing. Then you can, then after that, you can say, that was bullshit. That was a witch hunt. That was specifically targeting Michigan, Michigan and Jim Harbaugh, and it never should have happened. That's really the only time you can say that. And then, there, you know, for the people that say, like, wow, oh, the Big Ten hates Michigan, too. No, no, they don't, dude. Like, the Michigan is the, one of the golden gooses in the Big Ten conference. They don't hate Michigan. I promise you. Michigan makes that conference more money than any other program in the country, in, in the conference. Yeah. Um, it, look, as a fan, <laughs> that's the that's the first and most natural reaction. I get it, but this this is this is a little bit bigger than than just a fan's reaction, and you know, looking like this is uh unwarranted or unfounded or out of the blue or just just because. I just don't think you can treat it that way. When I just don't think you can treat it that way when it's take when it's going the path that it's already going. Uh, it's being involved, stuff like that. Yeah, Ralph, uh, the, the Big Ten put out a statement and said that they had notified Michigan State ahead of time, and Michigan State announced earlier today that they were still going to participate in the game. Yeah. So, the, yeah, this isn't this isn't just shit that people are making up. Now, sure, if you go on Twitter and you look at social media and you look at some of the conspiracy theories that are floating around out there, you're going to find some crazy stuff. But all you got to do is look at the initial report, what the Big Ten Conference has said and admitted to, and that's all you need to know that there's there's something. Again, to what extent, how bad was it, what was really going on, we'll find that out when the, when the evidence is presented. But I think just given the fact that the Big Ten is notifying future opponents, to me, that was where it raised the red flag, and I'm like, okay, this feels a little bit scary because... God damn it, Brandon, Michigan, this was, this is the year, you know, this was the year supposed to be the year that everything comes together, national championship season. And here we are, you know, on the doorstep of playing Michigan state going into the bye week and you get something like this that drops and it just takes a lot of the wind out of your sails because no matter what Michigan does for the remainder of the year, this is going to be a talking point by, by some folks. And they're already going back and pulling the tape on last year and the year before that and saying, see, Michigan wasn't that good after all. And that sucks. Well, and here's the deal. If if uh, if Shiano is talking out of his ass, if other staffers, other coaches, whoever these other sources are, are talking out of their ass, that'll be found out because there's not yes. going to be any evidence of something happening. And then at that point, then you can start taking all the pot shots you want at Shiano and ECU and whoever whoever's involved in this. It's it's gloves off at that point. But for right now, the way that this thing is developing and the way that it's coming together to simply say that it's bullshit just because you're a fan and it hurts your feelings a little bit. You can't you just can't do that. You, you it, Like, it's just not how it works. Like I said, if they do a deep dive in this and find nothing. Oh, it, then it, then it's then it's fire the cannons. I mean, yeah. at that point, it's it's fire the cannons. And, and all bets are off in terms of what you can and want to say about opponents, the NCAA, the Big Ten Conference, Greg Schiano, whoever. Like, that's that's how it has to go. It's either going to it's gonna go one way or the other. They're either going to find hard proof about it or they're not. You Like, the fact that there's an allegation out there sucks because the rival fan bases and the rival media people and the rival teams are going to say what they're already saying. But if they find no proof of it, they can say whatever the hell they want. Michigan's going right. to hold up their Big Ten championships rings and say "suck it," and that that that's all that's going to happen. But I'm I'm just saying right now it doesn't look good. I mean, when you step back and look at the big picture and see how this thing's coming together, the fact that the conference is involved, the fact that Michigan State had a potential out for Saturday's game, they know they're going to get drilled by 30 points. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, so I mean, the fact you know, that that's they're that's the other thing is, and and I've heard this discussed today, and it's it's a way that I feel like if this goes back. You know, if we're talking, if this goes back into 2022 and even into 2021, because people are pointing to how bad Michigan was during that 2020 season. And we've talked about it before, like just an incredible turnaround by Harbaugh and Michigan and what they did, you know, over the last two years and in, in, in this season. Uh, the thing that sucks about it is, yeah, Michigan didn't need or doesn't need not saying that they did. But if, if this is what happened, you don't need to steal signs and send in people to to watch Indiana or watch Rutgers or watch Bowling Green or watch East Carolina. Like you just don't need to do that. So that that's frustrating. And then the fact that it feels like 
the longer that this continues with Michigan and Harbaugh and the NCAA, it just feels like it's, I would love for Jim Harbaugh to come back next year, but I feel like he's being given a lot of reasons to just say, you know what? I don't want to deal with this shit. I just don't want to deal with it. Uh, for as much as he loves Michigan and for as well as he's doing here, this to me is just another push, another step in the direction toward him not returning because he doesn't want to deal with the NCAA. And it's clear that the NCAA doesn't want to deal with him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, this, this can go back to, and now I'm, now I'm doing what a lot of people in the media are doing. I'm, I'm guessing and reaching and wondering, but th this does feel like it goes all the way back to like, the satellite camps. I mean, all the way back to that when the NCAA was like, you can't do that because yeah. some of the some of the coaches in the SEC bitched about it and it got it climbed the ladder enough to where the NCAA said, no, you can't you can't do that anymore. It goes back to you know Jim Harbaugh does have a have a tendency to to push the envelope and I, that's one of the things that's made him great. But in, you know, in a couple instances, it's got some pushback too. And he, I mean, Jim Harbaugh's clearly not a fan of the NCAA. I mean, I don't know a lot of coaches that probably are. But he's been outspoken about it this year. I mean, as recently as this year. And then you get into the recruiting violations and the self-imposed penalty and the fact that the NCAA feel like they never got to stick it to him. I mean, all those things kind of included. I I don't doubt that there's some angle of that in all of this. But the, the fact that the conference is now involved with the sign-stealing thing makes it feel a little bit more real than if, if they weren't. If this was yep. just a couple coaches are pissed, the NCAA is launching another investigation, it would have a different feel. But the fact that Big Ten, the Big Ten Conference got involved and felt the need to notify Michigan State and the other four teams that were still on Michigan's schedule, that makes it feel a little bit more legitimate. If, and if you don't agree with that, I, I don't know how to convince you otherwise. I don't know I, how you I, can I, look I, at that and say it's bullshit. I just don't get that. And I'll just refer back to the, the article from The Athletic, which it says, I quote, the Big Ten approached Michigan State on Wednesday ahead of this weekend's matchup between uh, you know the rivals with Michigan. And with the what the league described as credible evidence that the Wolverines have successfully stolen signs called by opposing teams coaches this season. It and went the key on to point say, here is not during the game. It's the correct. way that they did it. That's the problem. So like, it's Bryce not like saying, you're, right. It's not like you're standing on the sideline and you're, you know, you're going through the game and you're picking up the, the, the calls yes. that are coming in from the opposing sideline. This is an allegation that Michigan is, is scouting these teams ahead of time, stealing their signs and then going into the game with the knowledge of what's already being called, which is that's the distinction between what you can do and what you can can't do. And the article from The Athletic then went on to say that the Big Ten claims that Michigan, as one source with knowledge of the allegations said, is using a vast network to steal opposing team signs. The league told Michigan State it has reviewed film that indicates, so this is important, the Big Ten, not the NCAA, the Big Ten told Michigan State that it has reviewed film that indicates the University of Michigan had knowledge of what play an opposing team was going to run before the play occurred. So I think that's where, again, I just get a little bit concerned because it's not the NCAA doing what it does and, and nitpicking and all this other bullshit. Now the Big Ten is involved, and they're actually having conversations with future opponents saying, we have evidence that this is occurring. What do you want to do with it? And, and as a Michigan fan, that's a little concerning. And, and that may, it may end up being nothing. It may, it may sure. just be that it may just be that Jesse Minter and his staff are that good. And what they've watched in film throughout the week that they recognize something and made a call on the fly. That's that happens all the time in football too. I remember there was a pretty famous clip from a few years ago with, uh, with Cam Newton and AJ, uh, uh, what the hell was this? Clay, 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 the bat linebacker for the Packers. It's escaping me now. Long blonde hair, whatever. Uh, anyway. Yeah. No, you're talking about. Before the snap, Matthews, Clay Matthews. Thank you. Before the snap, Clay Matthews said, "Hey, this is that. This is that flare out. That flare out." And Cam Newton stands up and says, "Hey, that's pretty good. I watch film too. Watch this and throws a touchdown pass." Like, right. dude, these guys are watching film on the opponent team all week long. It's not out of the realm of possibilities that Jesse Minter and his defensive staff recognized something based on a formation or a motion or a personnel package and made a call on the fly. That happens in football. That right. might that might be all this is. But, we don't but know here, that yet. But here's the thing. The Big Ten also knows that. Everybody right. in the college football world yes. knows that. So for the Big Ten to take this step 
to me, that just indicates that they have to have something that's almost indisputable at this point because everybody knows that happens. Everybody knows that you can get signs during the game and you can make adjustments. Like that's that's football, especially at this level. That's how that works. So if the Big Ten is going to come in and start notifying future opponents that you know things are happening and there's this vast network you know type deal going on. To me, it's I, again. I don't know what the evidence is. It's accusations at this point, but they it must be pretty damn good in order for the Big Ten to take the step that they took as far as notifying Michigan State and potential future opponents. I mean, that that's the part of this that gives me a little pause. Yeah. No. I mean, it's uh, it's it's obviously not great timing. It's another. I mean, for a while there, it was like God, Michigan just keeps shooting itself in the foot. I don't know if that's what this is. It doesn't. This is obviously, you know, feels a little bit different. But it's uh, it's it is going to be. I mean, like, okay, Michigan's going to go to East Lansing this weekend. They're going to beat the shit out of Michigan State. It's going to be eight and zero. And yeah. then in the press conference after the game, they're not going to talk about the game at all. It's going to be all about, you know, this. I don't know. There's going to be Michigan State people in there. I don't know. They Michigan State media people have had no problem getting snarky with Jim Harbaugh before. I I, I wonder how that will go on Saturday. Um, but yeah, th- this is uh, th- this is obviously a little bit bigger of a deal than a low level recruiting violation that Michigan had to deal with at the beginning of the season. So this is the shit that drives me insane. Like you get on here to have a conversation about this stuff and you get somebody saying that we're, we're giving corrupt and biased government bureaucrats, bureaucrats way too much. Cor- what are we talking about here? What are we talking about? What is, is that a reference to the NCAA? Like, what is that a reference to? This isn't, you know, again, it's not some sure. I, I can understand why a Michigan fan might think like the NCAA is out to get Michigan. They're out to get Harbaugh. And I do think there is some truth to that. I think that there is some beef there, but to, to also dismiss what the big 10 is doing and the steps that they've taken to notify future opponents. Now you're just sort of, you're, you're, you're living in ignorance because you don't want to acknowledge what's actually happening. The fact that guys, I don't, it's crazy to me. (laughs) <laughs> Michigan State had a, had an option to not play this weekend, and what would that have looked like? What would the you know? How does that go down in the record books? How does that affect Michigan season? What you know? What do the rest of the opponents do for the remainder? Penn State say, "Fuck it, I don't want to play him." Purdue, I don't want to play him. Ohio State, I don't want to play him. Like, what happens in in that scenario? It just I, I don't. I don't think that would be the same as a forfeit if the NCAA or the Big Ten is giving them the opportunity to not play. I mean, you you could you, you know because you could have a scenario where the remainder of Michigan's schedule just opts not to play the Wolverines. See, the, Aaron, you're kind of making our point by saying that the Big Ten better be sure if they're giving teams the option to not play. Exactly, that's that's the point. That's, that's what Chris is saying. He's like right. the Big Ten's not going to do that unless the evidence that they've had presented is pretty clear. Right. If if they're wrong, dude, like that that is. That's malpractice. That would be a huge fuck up by the Big Ten. And I, you know, Michigan would have, there would be a lot of, I would assume, legal consequences for the Big Ten conference if that ends up being the case. Robert, we're just not going to talk about it. We'll just, well, forget it. We'll just, we'll just not talk about it. Hey, we Chris, what about that rain out there today? Guess what? We don't, uh, we don't get paid for any clicks on the podcast here. <laughs> that's also <laughs> true. To so that's also true. That's a great theory there, Robert. Uh, unfortunately, it's uh, very flawed. Very yeah, flawed. No, We're I, doing I mean, this for free. Yeah, Chris and I started to talk throughout the day on this and just said, Let, let's let's go on and talk about it a little bit. I mean, it, it's it's obviously at okay, the center so then, of all let's, the news. Let's get, it, let's get it from some of the fans that are in here because Count 22, you're normally in the comments. I'm curious. You said you normally roll with us. But we're off on this one. What exactly are we off on? What 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 are we off on? You tell us, and then we'll we'll have a healthy debate. Because I'm, I'm interested. I've, I'm interested in an opposing view on this, so long as it's well thought out and and it's not coming from a place of just craziness. Yeah, I'm guys. You, your your argument can't just be this is bullshit. That that yeah. can't be it. There's got to be more than that. There just has to be more than that. <laughs> I can't see this is this is this is another example of the fan base just can't can't comprehend it's in like this is listen it's one of why I lost thousands of followers on Twitter when I was when I had enough of Harbaugh after 2020 listen this is people couldn't comprehend it this is what makes this is the the good part and the awful part about 
you know, not just college athletics, but sports in, in general. It's in your DNA. Like it's who you are. It's part of your identity. You don't want to ever believe that something you love so much that something you arrange your schedule around could do right. something. Like right here. They couldn't be stupid enough to why? Sure they could. You don't because you don't want them to be. Right. Dude, people are stupid. Okay, how about this, people Steven? Do stupid stuff. How about this, Steven? The Big Ten couldn't possibly be stupid enough to go ahead and warn future teams and give Michigan State an out if it didn't have concrete evidence that this stuff was happening, right? The Big Ten surely couldn't and be that stupid. Look, I Steven, I'm I'm not I'm not necessarily picking on you because my my train of thought is the same. I was like, Michigan doesn't have to do that to beat ECU or to beat Correct. Rutgers. But but if that's if that's hey, if that's part of what they've been doing, part of their system, and I hope that's not true. I hope it's not true. I, I, I mean, like they, I don't know why wouldn't they? And to other people's point, how in the world are they going to prove this? I don't know if they can. That's enough. Like the N, the NCAA may do this, may do this investigation and find nada. And if that happens, then what? Then Michigan just keeps beating teams, and 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 this will go away. I just to just say that they wouldn't do that. Like that's another thing. Whenever somebody gets accused of doing something wrong, like that, he, that guy would never do. Dude, you don't know that guy. You don't know anything about that guy. That guy might as well be a chair in my living room. You know nothing about that person. You can't just say that based on feelings and emotions. You just can't. It has. There has to be a little bit more to that. Correct. You know? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I missed a question up here that I thought. Please answer that. Yeah. Question. Let's pull some. Let's uh, let's pull some from the comment section because I think a lot of people have spent some time thinking about this today, and they they probably want to share their thoughts. If the evidence is clear, then why did MSU decide to play the game? I have a couple theories on that. One would be because you practice all week and you you're there to play football. Two, it's Michigan State. Three, it's a night game. Oh, and by the way, there might just be a tiny bit of money involved in in actually playing that game on Saturday, and also. Look, if they do think that Michigan is going to be out there stealing signs, it wouldn't be all that hard to switch up a few things and make it not possible. That, yeah. like, there's quite a few explanations as to why Michigan State would still play this game. I mean, the opinion. idea that that NBC wouldn't have a say in it is kind of uh, and honestly, kind of, kind of crazy at this point. You don't need much more of an of an of an explanation beyond the money. It's, you don't need much more. It's prime time NBC network television. This this Mo game is scheduled. It's happening. <laughs> money money talks, fellas and ladies. Money talks. And if you yeah. cancel that game and no one shows up to Spartan Stadium on Saturday, that's a big old kick in the pocketbook. And that's not something they want to do. That's it's probably no bigger than that. Honestly, <laughs> there might not even be, the the athletic department's like, oh no, we're playing this one. No, no, no. We're playing. Stealing signs or not, they're going to kick our ass and we're going to make a lot of money. So let's go ahead and play that one. That's that's probably as deep as that conversation went. Um, Let's see. Let's see. I mean, there's obviously, yeah, I've seen people comment. There was over 500 people in here at one point listening to us about this. So And then they just fell off because they're tired of listening <laughs> to it. I mean, we're getting to the end of it, I feel like. At this point, there's not much else that needs to be said. We're going to get a definitive answer. All right, well, let's, let's, make a, let's make a clarification here. So... I'm not necessarily sure, based on what I'm reading here, that the Big Ten gave Michigan an out, Michigan State an out. It sounded like that was something that Michigan State was considering. Uh, I'm just going to read this sentence here. According to a source briefed on the conversations after the, you know, the between Michigan State and the Big Ten, Michigan State initially warned the Big Ten that it might consider not playing Ooh. in Saturday's game out of concern for health and safety of its players. On Thursday morning, MSU confirmed it will play in the game. Okay. So, so it sounds like that. the Big Ten called them, gave them a heads up, said, look, Michigan knows what you're doing. Here's what's been going on, yada, yada, yada. Michigan State responded by saying, we might not play in the game. And then on Thursday morning, lo and behold, decide that they would play in it. Okay, that is an important distinction. Yeah. At the end of the day, the decision yeah. was being talked about that they uh oh uh oh breaking news, breaking news. What do we statement got? Statement from Jim Harbaugh. Statement from Jim Harbaugh just came through on the email wire. We should probably get this up in a story ASAP. I'm going to forward it to Trent and tell him to do it. Trent, if you're still listening, please put this up as a story immediately as Chris and I are going to read I'll just through text it. Him. You text him. I'm well, I'm going to yeah. email. Read, he doesn't read get the story though if you could, could you? He, he does not get the emails from Dave, I don't believe, so I'm going to forward that to him. All right. Statement from Michigan football coach Jim Harbaugh. 
I want to make it clear that I and my staff will fully cooperate with the investigation into this matter. I do not have any knowledge or information regarding the University of Michigan football program illegally stealing signals, nor have I directed any staff member or others to participate in an off-campus scouting assignment. I have no awareness of anyone on our staff having done that or having directed that action. I do not condone or tolerate anyone doing anything illegal or against NCAA rules. No matter what program or organization that I have led throughout my career, my instructions and awareness of how we scout opponents have always been firmly within the rules. Pursuant to NCAA rules, I will not be able to comment further while this investigation takes place. That's pretty cut and dry. Yeah. That is that is a that's as clear of a denial as there is. Well, then then you have to, again, this is one of those things where it's, you know, everybody's going to speculate until it happens, but going to need to see the, the evidence and, and exactly what the NCAA has, what the big 10 has seen and square that up with Jim Harbaugh's statement. Uh, because there's something in the, there has to be something in the middle. There's something out there that the big 10 has seen that, that is warranted notifying Michigan state of, of certain things happening According to Jim Harbaugh, he he wouldn't even think about being a part of something like that. So you really have to wonder, you know, what is this evidence that the Big Ten has seen and apparently has? Yeah, I stop mean, fanning the flames. I I just don't. Uh, I, I mean, unless you have a smoking gun here, I don't know what can be done. And it, yeah, it made me think that there might be one with the Big Ten getting involved. That it's was my biggest concern. That is really pissing me off. <laughs> Where, where's Ralph? This guy's fucking guy. Might be my TFG of the week here. You heard from Coach Harbaugh. Don't. Well, I mean. I just feel like there's, you know, there's listen. some people, there's some people that no matter how hard you try, you can, there, there's no, there's no reasonable conversation that can be had. Listen, I'm okay. This is one thing I thought of. What's the evidence? A guy filming the game with a hundred thousand people in there. It would be then the video at like, at some point that video is going to have to be given to somebody for it to be worth anything. And if there's a, sure. if there's a quote unquote paper trail of that, that's a problem. But that's, yeah, a that's guy standing biggest... in the stands, well, that's sure. nothing. Somebody yeah. having that video in their email or on their iPad or in some, you know, some uh, archive somewhere, that's, that's a different story. And that's what it would have to be. They're not going to, no, there's going to be nothing that comes from, what are they going to do? Pour over the over the crowd of every game that that's not that's not what this that's not what this is. They're going to try to find yeah, some evidence of it. Getting back to the staff, that's the biggest question: is what is the evidence, and what is it that the Big Ten has or has seen that led them to take the step to contact Michigan State and say this is what's happening. That's Joe, that's what I'm curious about. The, you don't do that on a hunt, they, Joe. They you don't, don't do have that, that on video. Videos. Of, they don't have to have video of the guy in the stands writing on a notepad. Uh, the, I'll tell you, Joe, I'll tell you right now, that's not going to happen. <laughs> We're not going to have video of a guy in the stands. Now, for people um, asking, it sounds like this was, uh, this was, been, this has been discussed a little bit today. Some, you know, people trying to tie it back to maybe what happened with Matt Weiss. It doesn't sound like that had no, anything to do with it. That was shot down pretty, uh, pretty early on. So I, I'll be honest, I had that initial thought as well. You know, you start going back to, you know, to prior seasons and the thing with Matt Weiss was fishy because the way it ended, like, you know, computer crimes and things being investigated, but we never knew what the hell, like what actually, like at this <laughs> point, we still don't know what happened, but from, from my understanding that that has nothing to do with, with this particular situation here. Joe, I, I hope I hope you could tell by my laughter that I, I could tell your comment was slightly tongue in cheek. They're not they're not going to find a guy, dude. You go to a Michigan game. There's eighty thousand people with their cell phones out. That's not going to do shit. It's going to yeah. have to be something, like I said, in an email inbox somewhere has you know somebody's got it stored somewhere in their scouting film. Somebody who was a part you of know, the vast they, network, their guilty yes. conscience got the best of them and came forward and said, "Look, I've been a part hey. of this and I can't keep doing it." That's that's not out of the realm of possibilities. If they start tracking down some people and you get cornered a little bit, uh, you never know. That's but. what I'm saying. I feel like it has to be something like that in order for the Big Ten to do what it did. Because if the Big Ten took the step of having this communication with Michigan State and you don't have something ironclad sitting in front of you that's like there's there's no dispute that this is going on, I just don't know how the conference can take that step. To me, that's... 
I think you said it earlier. That's malpractice. You can't yeah. do that if you're the Big Ten Conference and you're not damn sure what happened. All right. I think that's probably good. We're at the 40 minute mark of our 10 to 15 minute conversation. My son is yeah. probably tearing the house up upstairs. Uh, he was on a FaceTime call with grandma. They have hit a dead zone and now I don't know what the hell he's mm. doing. So mm. I'm going to go ahead and shut her down right there, Chris. I think that was good conversation. We'll obviously keep it locked. I do think that Jim Harbaugh releasing a statement is obviously a good thing. However, he's not going to release a statement saying, yeah, we, we did that shit. I mean, like that that's what he's going to say. And that's right. fine. He's either going to be proved to be a bold faced liar or the NCAA and the Big Ten is going to look like they're complete idiots and should never be in charge of anything again. It's one of the two. It's one of the two. And so we'll we'll let it play out and see what it is. I think that's good discussion. Now, we'll, we'll certainly revisit this tomorrow. We're coming back on yeah. uh, for our Friday show. but And hopefully we'll know more by then. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. And then the game obviously will be played on Saturday at 7 o'clock, 7.30 uh, in East Lansing. So there you go. If you guys have more comments, keep letting them fly. But we're going to get off the live here. And uh, this this whole thing will be put up in a story on Wolverine Digest. It's a, it's a long video, longer than we maybe thought. But eh, not all that surprised given <laughs> given the topic and the amount of interest. Over f Almost 600 people in here at one yeah. point, dude. Ralph is certainly like not invited to the conversation tomorrow. You can, you can <laughs> bet your ass on that, Rob. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. We will talk to you again tomorrow evening.